about Batman. This is a classic Batman, Batman book. I'm sorry, Batman. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's a guy who dresses like a bat and makes millions of dollars. <laughs> How many Bruce Waynes could Batman, the Batman I think franchise, half of Bruce have fun? <laughs> half of Bruce Wayne? Bruce no. Wayne has like a space program. I feel like well, Bruce Wayne, yeah. I mean, we've talked about this in previous episodes, the fact that like Bruce Wayne probably has like a trillion dollars. I don't think Batman, the brand, has made a trillion dollars. Like, yeah, probably the, not. the proportion, no. you know, you think because people are like, oh, well, Endgame made like three billion dollars, you know, or right. whatever. You know, it's like movies make billions of dollars now, so I would assume that if like you just put all the Bat movies end to end and then add like all the video game sales, maybe right. that would average out to- Yeah, but you need a thousand billion dollars exactly. to get to a trillion, so like, that's a lot. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, I think you still have not reached Bruce Wayne status mm. from all the, like from milking the cash cow that is Batman. So yeah, this is part of the Legend of the Dark Knight initiative. Uh, it starts at issue 11, it's a five part miniseries from Doug Mensch, Paul Gulacy, uh, or Gulacy, I've never heard his name said in polite society, so I have no idea how to pronounce it. But uh, <laughs> we'll pronounce it Gulacy for now because that's what I think of when I'm in my head. This uh, pairing is actually kind of like an iconic duo of this time where Doug Mensch and Paul Gulacy work together on a number of Batman stories and other stories like James Bond books or Dark Horse. But also, the one that I know them from is that they teamed to make Batman Predator 2 Blood Match. Oh, of course. Right, right. Don't forget. Blood Match! <laughs> which was, uh, to put it mildly, disappointing mm. compared to its predecessor. But so were all of them. You know? Yeah. Superman, Superman and Batman. But we're not here to talk about Right. <laughs> we're here to talk about Prey. Despite the fact that, that this book is called Prey. Batman Prey. Right. And there is a Predator movie called Prey. We actually do have two copies of Prey. We have this ancient printing of Prey and the original uh, floppies from Legend of the Dark Knight. Which are even more ancient. They are, in fact. Yeah, because those had to come first. So yeah. So this I, is ancient, those are decrepit. I will say I enjoy this on a lot of levels, but also I think it's funny how exploitative it is huh. of a lot of things now that I think about it. Originally oh. I was like, oh, it's exploitative of year one. They're just like, okay, year one came and went. Everyone's happy about it. Uh, let's just keep coming back to it. And yeah, let's just go back to early Batman. There's so many books that are like, okay, using the template of year one. Oh, I'm listening. <laughs> I'm going to tell you how they invented what? The bat signal. Like, oh, I don't really care. Yeah, but it's also tied in with like this kind of mob story. Oh, I guess that's okay. part of Batman. Is that good? Will the Joker be in it? Hell no. No, okay, no, no, it's right. the mob. Exactly. It's early Batman. It's before the Joker. It, 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 yeah. Or before he was around well, as much, maybe. Yeah, Joker actually does have like a cameo in year one, oh. in as much as the end of the book is that there's a, a Joker yeah. card. Right, right. Like, Joker's coming. Right. For some reason in my brain, I couldn't get past the Predator part, which is like, <laughs> that's kind of like this book, where they tease the entire time. And at right. the end, there's the Predator. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, that's what this is. And then Predator shows up. I mean, that's basically, you, Batman Predator Blood Match from the exact same team as this, Prey might as well be the template for Batman Predator Blood Match. Like they were just like, do that, but with a Predator in it. We're gonna make a Predator movie comic book. Yeah. Where it wasn't a Predator movie until we said, <laughs> but then a Predator shows up. I mean, that's the formula. The formula is real script, act two Predator shows up, throws the script off base. That's what I want to see. And with Batman Predator 2 Blood Match, it's exactly what that is. There is a like really boring old Batman story in there. Thank God there are Predators in it because <laughs> I promise you I never would have read it if it come out like just as is. As it stands, it took me a long time to repray because the main villain is Dr. Hugo Strange. Oh. And it's like, you don't like Dr. Hugo Strange? No, it's more like he's not colorful and flamboyant or has any powers. You know, he's just an <laughs> asshole. Right. He exploits so the like, mental health system. like, why should I bother? Right, like, oh boy. This book is not terribly complimentary to the concept of mental health, you know? I, I very vividly oh, recall like, in the 90s, uh, psychiatrists were often referred to as quacks. Quacks, yeah. Colloquially. Yep. So I was like, yeah, that's very much in here. Oh, and, and they, people didn't talk about their emotions. No, absolutely not. And then when they did, and they did on TV, they were exploitative. Like, they yep. were just using psychobabble, as they coined it, yep. uh, to exploit weaker-minded people into, you know, getting exploited by them. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's a good story. It is it a good story. It definitely has happened. Right. Well, you know, I, but it's not 
what is normal. No, <laughs> or at least what it shouldn't be. Yeah, Again. I like this color palette right off the bat. I'm looking at these. I'm like, I like these colors. Yeah, it's yeah, like somehow solid. like bright and colorful, but also like dark and yeah. moody. Steve I mean, O'Leaf, who I mean, was actually a consummate colorist, did a great job back then and now. Part of that might be the paper too. Yes. Oh, absolutely. No, the paper is paramount. We talked about this in another episode where I'm like. We lost something when we switched paper stock. Mm -hmm. uh, there is something to be said for like this almost newsprint. Yeah, yeah that level like of cheap. That, <laughs> yeah, that quality. Paper. Although I think it's also like there's something interesting about like the way in which we colored comics until we went to digital. Mm -hmm. Because like when we went to digital, it's like oh well, whatever color you want that exists, right. you can approximate perfectly. Done. But when it came to printing comics from like the beginning until we got to digital, you had to be creative and clever. Mm -hmm. You had to know what your limitations were. There were limitations. And if you wanted to achieve it, you had to really be clever about it. Or you had to right. be You had to an work expert. within the box. Yes. Yeah. And if you wanted to get outside that box, you had to cheat. When we reached digital, you know, we were at the apex of color gymnastics to achieve what we could with the four colors we had available. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's kind of amazing. This story builds off of year one in that Batman has successfully achieved establishing himself. He has made a friend, tentative though it may be, with Jim Gordon mm. by rescuing his son from certain death. That's where we are. Okay. The closest thing to vehicles Batman has is that hang glider he used in Batman year one. Which he will use in this. What? Because remember Batman Year One? Right. And it's like, all right. Well, he would have used it more than once. Exactly. I mean, why would he just use it one time and then throw it away? Right, come on. It's yeah, crazy. Also, it's like... The only other vehicle he has is Alfred in the limo. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Although, honestly, I don't remember Batman using it so much as Tim using it. Like, Tim mm. Drake Robin rode in that van a lot. And I love the idea that Alfred had to keep, like, a cheap junker van in the Wayne garage. Because if he drove up to a crime scene with Robin in the passenger seat in, like, the rolls, it would rouse suspicion. Right. People would be like, wait. Who is Robin's Uber driver? Yeah. Who is rich enough to do that? <laughs> that being said, that is also another plot point in this. Is, dis is, is disseminating Batman's identity from very obvious clues. Mm. Uh, but don't forget, Hugo Strange is also a genius. So he could, no one else but him could ever figure it out. Right. Also, the idea of Jim Gordon, will they, won't they, does he know who Batman is? He definitely knows who Batman is. He doesn't call him at home. Right. Although Batman does call him at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, well, Batman does as he will. That's right. Well, Batman has Gordon's number. Gordon does not have his number because Star 69 was not invented yet. <laughs> but there are a lot of faces in this book. Like, every, obviously, because there's a lot of characters and every human has them. Yeah, but, but they're like, unique. They're very distinct. Not every human. Maybe even horrific. Like, too real. Right. Like, he was using a lot of reference. I don't know. Or, I, or he wasn't. <laughs> I don't... I vividly recall in Batman Predator 2 Blood Match... Mm -hmm that everyone in the book was ugly. <laughs> like they just had the most right. horrible, Doing a thing. distinctive face. <laughs> but and not the, like the same ugly. No! Yeah. Yes, right. But not Steve Dillon's same face. This was just, ugh. Right. Because everyone's like, in like- It's like, because people are ugly. Right, well people are not always making whoa, the most whoa. ideal face. face yeah. yeah, but people in Gotham are ugly. Because <laughs> Gotham well, itself is ugly. I don't right. think that like Gotham, well, you know, and Scott Snyder be like, yeah, no, if you live in Gotham for a certain amount of time, like Gotham will morph you into something. Yeah, it's the Batmanium leeching <laughs> into your bones. Yeah, yeah, it'll either make you into like a sadistic murderer or an ugly, weird-faced monster. But anyway, the GCPD is looking to catch some low-level dealer and uh, squeeze them for info on the big fish. Right. Who ironically is They're called Fish, by the way. Oh. I believe it's actually a pseudonym, but still. Right. Okay. I'm like, come on, it's big fish. fish. Yeah. He's like, look, these have to come out. <laughs> all right. Yeah. Don't okay. worry about that. Yeah. Don't worry about the names. But uh, so the, all these plain clothes cops are setting up the sting, and then uh, they catch him doing a buy, the uh, the low level guy. Mm -hmm. Right. And then Batman just swoops in, grabs him, and puts him on top of a marquee outside the theater where the where the drug bust was going. <laughs> and Batman's immediately like, "All right, tell me who the guy is. Like, who's your dealer?" <laughs> and the mm. cops are like. Batman took this guy, go up there and arrest both of them because Batman is vigilante. That's right. that guy. Well, also like, how do we know they're not working together? Uh, it's more just like, we, kn we know that because Batman beats the living shit out of criminals. He is okay, also not a drug dealer. Criminals also beat the shit out of each other. Right, well, Batman is not a drug dealer. No one is thinking that. There's a very specific reason why they're so quick 
to arrest Batman on sight. Mm. Uh, but Batman just essentially beats him up, gets the info he needs, and then goes, all right, I'm done with him, guys, and then throws him at the police, climbing the ladder to reach him. Huh. But one of them, Sergeant Court, is incensed. Huh. Like, he is like, how dare you? Like, do my job for me, and then rub it in my face. Right. Like, you could do, like, we were literally doing it. Like, we were going right. to we arrest were about him. to do the same thing as you. We don't need you. Right, and Batman's like, yep. <laughs> oh, I found who it was by. I saved the day. What? I did what you couldn't do. Months <laughs> of police work. You're welcome, Gotham. <laughs> that's right. And it's like, that's Are they here in the city needs? That's a fair point, you know, but uh, Court takes it too far. So, Court goes to Gordon, he's like, what the crap? There's this Batman thing, we gotta arrest this guy. What are guy. we doing about the Batman situation? Exactly, yeah. and Gordon's like, well, I kind of feel like Batman's awesome. <laughs> I may be biased because save my son, but I'm not gonna leave that Yes, out. you are. All Specifically, right. you are biased. You know that's what, what that this means. This whole place is completely stem to stern corrupt. If I have to be the one, if we're all, when in Rome, right? <laughs> I'm corrupt, right. but the only thing that is my Achilles heel is that I back Batman. Is a guy Batman. who does justice. Right, exactly. I support Batman. All of you are in some way in the pocket of the mob. Right. <laughs> and I'm the only one who's so corrupted. So I'm, I'm not in taking I'm the, shit from anybody. Yeah, I may be in the pocket of big Batman, but that's not so bad. That's better, yeah. So Gordon's like, look, Court, I don't have time for this. I gotta go be on TV, which I don't want to do. The uh, show is a panel talking about the Batman problem. They have the new mayor, they have Gordon, and they have uh, this- Is Gordon commissioner in this? No, he's not, he's Captain Gordon. Okay. Right mm. after his year one, so right. he's he's not uh, commissioner so yet. So what's he doing on TV? Okay, <laughs> he's on TV because he's about to be ambushed by the mayor. Oh. Like, I know you're cozy with Batman. Yes, with, with or at the very least you seem to be lax on the Batman problem. Right. So they, All I'm saying is, uh, we feel like there's a light on top of your precinct every once in a while. But it's coming. <laughs> We're not there. In this book. Oh, this is, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, there was now, a reason I threw we'll, that out there earlier. We'll get to find out. We get, we get at least two classic Batman inventions in this story. Uh, and it's like, all right. You know, like they, they happen and I'm like, did we need that? <laughs> but also, I guess, yes. You know, like, if I'm gonna see basically every minute of Batman's life, because you're never gonna stop publishing Batman <laughs> books, I guess at some point we're invariably gonna find out how they invented the bat signal. Right, he had to I do have, it at some point. We yeah. have to get it I in have a somewhere. bet on what the second one is. Oh yeah? Yeah. So on the panel, they also have Hugo Strange, who is a noted psychiatrist who's uh, there to offer his expert opinion on Batman based on literally nothing. Uh-huh. You know, except eyewitness accounts. Right, and, the, uh, the very few times he's shown up. Exactly, he's like, yeah. well, I'm prepared to make an armchair opinion about who Batman is and what he's all about. Right. And I uh, mean, all he has to do is interview criminals, I guess. That, that's true, which uh, he doesn't really bring up. Batman goes home, uh, they turn on the tube, this program is on, uh, Bruce is gonna watch it, Alfred, advises against it because it's like, why do you want to listen to a show where they talk about how ineffectual and terrible you are? Like, what? why? <laughs> Batman's like, it's cool. Gordon's in my pocket. He'll back me up. Right. Uh, so he listens to the show. And Hugo Strange goes off about who Batman is mm -hmm. and how he may have schizophrenia and how he has to have like this dual identity and stuff. And Bruce, He probably has, you know, dead parent issues. Right? He doesn't bring up the dead Never parent. Never turn it off! No, uh, Hugo Strange <laughs> has a very specific idea about who Batman is, but he is like, dude, th this guy clearly has a trauma that made him do this. And based on his mm. physical prowess and his aversion to killing, because like he clearly could if he wanted to, but he doesn't. Mm. So why is that? Maybe he must have experienced some kind of trauma associated with death in his life. Like Hugo Strange is really hitting some 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 boxes here. Yeah. Right. And he's, Bruce is like, nah. he's actually very accurate in right. his analysis. It, so Bruce is literally treating this like free therapy, where he's like, he just sits back in an easy chair, he's like, go. <laughs> and so Strange is going off, but every time that he says something Batman doesn't like, he's like, no. <laughs> Which, hey. you know, so it's like therapy. Yeah. And so Strange is going on and on. And then Gordon goes, or, and they're like, what? And he's like, or he dresses like a bat because he wants to scare the shit out of criminals and beat their asses. Right, because it works. Because that's exactly what it is. Right. And Batman's like, see, this guy gets it. This guy. That guy. Yes. Gordon Gordon's gets got it. my back. Thank God I gave him notes. <laughs> I just love, like, Batman's like, well, my enabler gets it. <laughs> But while Strange like psychoanalyzes Batman, like Bruce is like a drink in his hand, he shatters the glass instinctively. Oh. And Alfred's like, oh, and he's like, leave it on. <laughs> so while he's listening to, to Strange break him down like a science project, friggin' 
Alfred's like dressing his wound. Oh my god. Batman's just chewing the glass. <laughs> <laughs> I know how It'll make me stronger. It's totally cool. And then uh, after Gordon is raked over the coals and the mayor basically goes, you know, Gordon, you're such a good cop. We're going to put you as the head of the vigilante task force we just created that I just made up. To because, hunt for Batman. Yes. And uh, the idea is that like Strange was really persuasive and... The mayor was like, yeah, I don't know, Batman, he's done some good stuff. Because, like, I'm mayor because of him, basically. And uh, Strange really gets into there, and he's like, no, you know what, you're right. Batman is a crazy person, and he needs to be brought down. And so, after that, he immediately appoints Gordon on TV as the head of the task force. Mm -hmm. And Batman's like, what does that mean? Like, right. why, like, why didn't Gordon immediately dismiss it? Like, does he really believe in this? Like, is he against me? Is or he, he wants know. to be in charge or, of the task force so he can prevent it from working. Well, Gordon doesn't want to be a part of it at all. Well, that's no. just it. Like, yeah. is this but, the thing where if he's in charge of the task force, does he have to follow orders like well, the military? Or yes. does he have to like, is it going to be difficult for him to like, make up a ruse? Yeah, yeah. Of, like, yeah. It does put him yet. in an awkward position. So Gordon leaves and he's like, well, that was a shit show. Huh. Well, Batman's like, I'll be in the cave! He runs down there, and he starts working on, clearly, the, like, the Batmobile. He's building the chassis for it. And so it's like, the Batmobile. It's the Batmobile. Okay, I was thinking it was Batarang. Ah, oh. no, he already has those. Oh. Yeah, I don't remember. Fast. Nah, they don't look anything like this. <laughs> the year one Batarangs don't look anything like this. In fact, mm -hmm. no Batarang looks like the Batarangs that Gulasi draws in these stories. They are these weird, like, they have little hooks on them. He uses them like, like, like actual boomerangs. It's... Huh. And he uses them as like parrying weapons. So Gordon's like, okay, fuck. <laughs> what am I gonna do about this? Well, okay, I got it. I will hamstring this task force by getting like the lieutenant, like the main guy on this task force who will be just completely bullheaded and fanatical about taking down Batman, but is also like a crappy cop, so he won't be able to do it. Oh, is it court? Uh, yeah. All right. So it's like, I'll so just like, appoint someone who sucks. Yes. But somebody who, you would it would make sense on paper why you'd call right, him. Right, no one will question the fact yep. that I appointed him. Yeah, everyone's going to look at him and be like, oh, zealot. that's a yeah. that's an a rate cop Oh, yeah, right he there. hates Batman. You're clearly doing your job. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Smart. Foolproof plan that completely blows up and becomes the reason why the story exists. Ah. Uh. The mayor, who doesn't care, appoints someone to the task force. Who doesn't who want to be there. Batman's friend. <laughs> right. Yeah. So Gordon appoints someone who hates Batman. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right? Like, Gordon should have filled the task force with Batman-friendly people. Right. But then it'd be known that that was what he was doing, and then he'd get fired. That's true. Oh, then the mayor is like, you know, Strange, you're so convincing and interesting. <laughs> and smart. Mm. And handsome. <laughs> that I want you to work for the Gotham City Police Department. Like, we're going to oh. hire you as, like, a consultant who will advise us on our manhunt for Batman. And he's like, that sounds great. So there's a great interaction between the mayor and Strange, where he's like, I trust you'll find your payment more than satisfactory. And Strange is like, no, it's horribly insulting. It's like the lowest I've ever been paid and I will definitely take the job. <laughs> and he's like, uh, 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 oh. uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm just processing the two different things you just said. And he's like, yeah, no, like if I- I'm not here for the money, I'm here for the uh, the strangeness. The prestige and the fun. Yeah. No, it's... That is Batman. He's like, no, I'm going to write a book about this. Like, I'm going to take mm. down Batman. I'm going to find out who he is. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to get millions of dollars off your backs. Right. And he's right. like, oh. The salary is unimportant. Exactly. Yeah. But also... I did it for free. But I'm glad you are paying. But me. I do want the money, though. I do, because yeah. I live here. I'm in, like, a major metropolitan area. <laughs> as long as you pay for uh, daily expenses, I'm fine. Exactly. <laughs> he's charging $5,000 a day? Yeah. What is he eating? <laughs> Stop him! <laughs> First order of business in the task force is keeping a lid on Hugo Strange's <laughs> expense budget. This per diem's out of control. Yeah, but uh, no, Strange clearly has like other ulterior motives. Like he is, he seems to be very interested. He's like really big on Batman. You might say he's obsessed him? with Batman. You might say that. You might definitely say that. Like maybe it's why he came to Gotham and agreed to be on the TV show to begin with. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Remember that plot about oh, the yeah. drug dealer? Well, I'm going to go down there and I'm going to take down fish. Is Alfred like, but sir, they're going to be hunting you. What about the task force? No. Oh, okay. No, Alfred, remember, Alfred's like, there's a moment where Batman almost dies. He comes home and Alfred goes, well, I'm not going to say I told you so. I'm feeling it. Right. And I'm thinking it really hard. Right. And it's so hard, I bet you can hear it. <laughs> but I'm also still your butler. Right. But right. like, technically I'm your employee <laughs> because I'm not like your father yet. You know, like people who grew up reading these comic books aren't writing them yet. 
You know, so they're not like, well, but Alfred is Batman's surrogate father, and I need to do real stories, heart-wrenching stories <laughs> about how Alfred is so torn and tormented. And how Bruce they're Wayne's tied decision. together so much. Exactly. No. He's Meanwhile, not. Bruce will just be like, I will fire you. I will fire you in a heartbeat <laughs> if you give me lip. Exactly. There are plenty of people who will be my butler. Right. There's no shortage. Yeah. There are hunchbacks waiting in line to live down here and eat dog food. Oh, right. Catwoman's in this. Yeah. Uh, and that's where it's like, all right. It, it, it's... A, You've already got a lot of spinning plates right now. You right. got like you got the whole like police department has a task force that's hunting Batman and Gordon is ironically in charge of it. You've got this new obsessive guy Court who wants to take down Batman, who also may be, as we saw him in the gym, a physical contender for Batman. Oh. And you've got Hugo Strange who was introduced in like the 40s, who's always a classic Batman villain, but we're now introducing him for the modern age and the oh, post-crisis like continuity. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's like, we're, we're, we're setting up a lot There's of stuff. a lot here. And then also Catwoman? Hey, Frank Miller can can do a story with a whole bunch of characters and yeah, stuff going on. Yeah, but he invented all of them. <laughs> uh, Court reminds me very much of What's-His-Face from year one. The big Flass. Flass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. yeah, he is a little bit like Flass. But I think the reason why uh, Catwoman's here is so the ghouls he can draw her naked. <laughs> I, right. I, because this it's is like, a horny-ass book. I would like to do that. It's. I don't know if it's horny or if it's gross and exploitative. I don't know. <laughs> I'll let you be the judge. Right. But I will say it is an issue. <laughs> the depiction of women in this mm. is horrific and violent and weird. Like, I, I, it's not like, okay. I think, I don't think that it is passively exploitative. I think it is trying to be like a hard-boiled detective story mm -hmm. and in it, the dames are in trouble. Right. I, I appreciate and that. And they're dames. <laughs> they're not women, no, they're no, not no. ladies, they're dames well, that treat them like meat. Except for Catwoman, who right. has agency, but like, to what end? You shouldn't do anything as a character. Uh, She's here. Uh -huh. So Court gets his men together and he's like, all right, we're doing a wet tech. Then you theater kids out there know that uh, this, actually he calls it a dry run that may get wet. And you're like, uh? But then he, ta he talks about how it's like, treat it like it's, uh, dress rehearsal, but treat it like opening night. And I'm like, oh yeah, like wet tech. Like I remember doing it in, uh, in, in in theater class where it's like, treat your dress rehearsal like it's going to be live. So it's like, if you flub a line, you have to move forward, don't stop. Right. You know, We're gonna use all the lights and all the, uh, the musical cues and everything. Everything's happening. Yeah. We're going You're to- You're gonna be blinded for a little while. Get used to that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, get used, you wanna get used to that. Uh -huh. So uh, Court gets his men hand selected and they're all gonna get into cars and they're gonna go check out the last known location of fish that they got from the perp that Batman interrogated first, but still gave Court any information about fish. Right. Right. So they're gonna go do that. Meanwhile, Batman is also on his way over there because like he got the same information. Meanwhile, Hugo Strange is in his penthouse, having a drink, talking about his analysis of Batman, his machinations to a sexy lady mannequin. And you're like, oh, okay, so you're nuts. You're crazier than Outhouse Rat. You, uh, just, you, you, you go on TV and you're like, oh, let me pass judgment on all these people. And uh, meanwhile, I'm fucking this mannequin. No, you understand, when we're alone, she's real. <laughs> oh my I God. I just saw the movie. <laughs> mannequin, or Mannequin 2. <laughs> that would have been, yeah, that would have been around this time, right? Yeah, exactly, it's timely. It was ripped from the headlines. <laughs> but uh, no, he's clearly just a nut job. And he's made himself a Batman costume. Oh no. Yeah. And of course, the Batman mask, you know, it's not available in every corner drugstore. So right. you had to make it out but of like bondage a. bondage masks are. <laughs> you had to make it out of like a sex gimp mask. So, like, yeah. Oh my God. It's like, well, I have, I have, I have, I have those to spare. Okay. That's kind of awesome. Right? And now you wear the Batman mask, mannequin. Oh. Oh, oh you oh. read ahead? Oh no. Because <laughs> there's no way the yeah. Universe Strange does not want to bang Batman. Your mind is just so interesting. I have to get inside of it. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. And you're like, okay, what, tell us how you really feel about mental health in this country. So court takes his men to go uh, take down fish. They have to take two cars, because there's just too many cops. And in the one car the court is not in, they're all talking to each other like, okay, so we all work for fish. Ever, this is the fish car. It's the fish car. And it's not like Court put a bomb in that car and he's like, all right, everyone who is awesome goes in that car and I'll drive alone. No, he has no idea, but these guys are like, okay, so like, what do we do? Like, we are cops. We do have a pension plan, Like, but I do like getting paid by this guy. Right. But we can't call him because cell phones don't exist yet. So what do we do? What are we supposed to do? And yeah. so one of them throws a light on top and hits the siren. 
Oh. And that tips off Fish, right. but Batman's already there, and so Batman beats the shit out of Fish's men. So when Court arrives, He's like, that car, you you guys are all under arrest. Uh, like, you, you deliberately tip. He immediately knows. He's yeah. like, you guys tip There's that no off. There's no reason yeah. for you to put the siren on. You're undercover. Yes. And so now he and his men are armed to the teeth and ready to stop us. So he leads one of his task force members that was riding with him to watch them um. while the five other guys and court go into the warehouse. They go in. They see Batman. They attack him. Batman's like, oh, my God. Like, I am going to die. Like, these cops are gonna shoot me. At first he <laughs> thinks maybe Gordon went in because like it's a coordinated attack on Fish. Mm. And he thinks, why is Gordon so stupid? Like to set off an alarm, like why would he do this? Right. Oh, Gordon's not even here. That explains why it's so shitty. It's because these Keystone cops here just went in. <laughs> Meanwhile, Catwoman is committing robberies. Oh, what? But well, we haven't finished the scene. I know, we gotta break up the action. <sighs> well, remember how I showed you Catwoman earlier? Yeah, well, here Let she is again. Let me show her to you again. So, you know what? All right, I'm gonna give it to Hugo Strange. We all have our sexual proclivities. He wants to have sex with mannequins. Right. Obviously, that one's anatomically correct, <laughs> as it is wearing lingerie, and he's very intimate with it, all right, whatever. And he has a gimp mask. Maybe a little shirt. Okay. Oh no, he's wearing a Batman costume and he's like play fighting. <sighs> Thank God he's wearing it. He didn't put it on her. I thought that was what it was gonna be. Oh well. So <laughs> he's doing his thing and he's like, oh Batman, like, do you is this this is why you do this? I feel so strong, like being an other, putting on this this anonymity and doing this that and the other. Like, yeah, is this what it is? Is this what it's like to be Batman? Batman I mean, out there? He's just oh my god. He's one step away from having a katana and pretending to be a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. <laughs> <laughs> yes, although it's funny. Which we all do! There are, yes, that's right. Or, or a Jedi. If I have a flashlight on, am I gonna, am I gonna turn it on by going boo? Maybe, you know, maybe nine times out of 10. Batman barely escapes as he escapes Court and his men. Mm -hmm. uh, clearly, yeah, and Strange barely escapes orgasm. <laughs> yes, because <laughs> he's also <laughs> a master of edging. And uh, uh, it looks like Fish gets away. And Fish gets away, yes. Yeah, because the police focus on Batman. Yes. Uh, Batman, of course, took his hang glider to get there, mm -hmm. but because of the police action, he had to run away. Oh, he and loses so his hang glider. He loses the hang glider, and he has to walk from Gotham back to the manor. And there's this scene of <laughs> Batman doing the walk of shame back to the manor in his <laughs> Batman costume, just being like, I had to walk home. Yeah, at like 6.30 in the morning. Yeah, yeah he's just, because <laughs> it's like, oh my god. I can't call Alfred, I don't have a cell phone. No! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, Strange is like open the window to his penthouse and he's like, yeah, Batman! Oh, oh, oh. And, like almost falls out the window. Yikes. Oh, this cape catches too much wind. And he's like, oh, oh, oh my God. Oh, that was the scariest shit ever, that was ever happened to me. He's like, okay, I can be as smart as Batman, but clearly my body is not ready. Like I'm not as strong. Or uh, as, like, yeah, you never will be. Exactly. And he's like, oh, I hate you, Batman. I envy you, I love you. I want to kill you and have sex with you. Oh God. So he's uh, looking at the mannequin and he's like, well, you're laughing at me too. And he slaps her across the face, knocks the head off. Oh boy. He's oh like, yeah, he's stable. He's oh like, yeah, yeah, does that feel good? Yeah, How, how'd you like that? Anyway, <laughs> so Batman's like, all right. Oh, what a great session. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think I made a real breakthrough today. <laughs> Modern psychiatry at work. <laughs> Batman's like, cancel all my appointments. I don't want to see anybody. I just want to sit and just think about my life. <laughs> or and maybe Alfred's sleep. Like, catch my breath. <laughs> and Alfred's like, so you don't want to go to the party that the mayor's throwing that he invited you to that Hugo Strange will be at. Oh. He's like, yeah, I'll go to that oh, one. I do want to go. And he's like, I know, that's why I told them you were going. It's not a ah. brunch, is it? Because I need a nap and a shower. <laughs> no, it's there. <laughs> so then uh, Batman, or Bruce Wayne, goes to the party and everyone's hobnobbing and talking and we meet the mayor's daughter. I have to remark, this is the first time we're getting a good look at Bruce Wayne. I know. He looks like shit. He yeah. looks like dog shit. I know. I don't like anyone's faces. They're all like, it's okay. Hugo so, Strange looks fine. Yeah. Well, he because looks like he's a supposed creepy to look weirdo. Like that, yeah. But Bruce Wayne, he's, that's because they're like, well, I know what Batman looks like with the mask on. But when I take the mask off, it still has to make proportionate sense. I'm like, no, it doesn't. No, it really doesn't. It doesn't. Just it's draw another guy. It's a comic book. You can draw whatever you want. Uh, Ugh. No, I'm I'm doing work. You here. need to be able to put your thumb over the top of his head and be like, "Oh, it's Batman," <laughs> a as drawn by Gulasi. Right. And it's like, okay, fine. Everyone's talking about how Batman sucks. They ask Bruce Wayne his opinion. Obviously, he's like, "I don't know, Batman. Who cares?" I, I when I'm thinking about the nighttime, I'm thinking about boning chicks. Right, <laughs> Catherine? Huh? She's like, 
And then they're like, what about you, Catherine? What do you, what do you think? And she's like, I think Batman's awesome and he's doing a good like job. Like, oh. I think that without Batman, we'd be in a lot shittier th th position than we are now. Right. Bruce is like, would you be able to say that on TV? <laughs> <laughs> is, is this Bruce Wayne defending Batman? No. Or is he He being... immediately just brushes up. He's like, I don't know. Okay, but he's not no, like, who appointed the Batman? Dresses up like a Batman. No. Clearly, has, clearly issues. has issues. Sounds like he's got issues. Yeah, no, he just, he's just not Bruce Wayne from, uh, <laughs> from the from the Nolan verse. But uh, but Hugo Strange like, oh, you like Batman, do you? Well, I masturbate in this costume all the time. That's practically six Batman. Basically, <laughs> <laughs> He's like, listen, like I, I'm very intrigued by your opinions of Batman. Maybe we could talk about it over dinner. She's like, absolutely not. Uh, no. Uh, you no. look creepy as fuck. <laughs> you look 20 years older than me. You <laughs> Literally, I'm the daughter of the mayor who's next to me. And you're trying to make time? Like, what's the matter with you? I mean, well, the I mayor was a really special guest yeah, right. of your dad's yeah. Yeah. in your city. That's, that's exactly his attitude. That's 100%. You, you should give him a chance, dear. He's quite a the brilliant mayor's not man. Like that. Okay. The mayor's <laughs> are like pretending not to hear that. <laughs> so the task force is interviewing perps about Batman. One of them goes off about how like Batman is a metaphysical concept. He's definitely a demon of some kind. He, he's not a man. <laughs> right. Like, oh, get him out of here. I don't want to hear about this. <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, the, the court's men bring the hang glider to court. And Court's like, holy shit, jackpot! Analyze every square inch of the hang glider. Right. But now Batman has no hang glider. What is he going to do? Well, obviously we saw he's, he's building the Batmobile. He'll be driving the Batmobile at the end of the story. Right. Well, I mean, not only that, but like, he could get Alfred to make him another he's hang glider. Another one. <laughs> That's true. But it looks very complicated. It's very difficult to make. So <laughs> Gordon's like, okay, so Court is not as stupid as I thought. Yeah. Shit, this is all coming apart. Uh, Meanwhile, the news is talking about Batman and Catwoman because Catwoman was in the book, you see. And also because in year one, the news was saying that Catwoman and Batman may be partners. Right. Even though in year one, Catwoman is like, no. And then so she scratches Roman's face, thereby trying to differentiate from their methods and, right. pu and push him further away. The news does not in this story, gravitate towards that. Instead, they're like, yeah, no, Batman and Catwoman are definitely partners. Well, I mean, they're both vigilantes. And she's, that, that's exactly right. right. She's like, damn it, I need to prove that I'm not. Right. Meanwhile, a news reporter is on television talking about like the Batman, Strange's theories. Uh, also, there's another vigilante named Catwoman, or at least there's a cat burglar at large, and maybe she's connected to Batman, etc. So Court and his men get a warrant for Fish's house, they're just gonna go there and just storm it. Right. And uh, meanwhile, uh, one of Court's men or Court himself is wearing a bandolier. Yeah, well, oh, yeah. They, they just they, when they last fought Fish, they went under heavy fire, and that was just like a warehouse. Who knows? Right. House might yes, be a house, fortress. Yeah, we might need you know hundreds of bullets <laughs> each. That's true. Yes. So wear a bandolier. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I need backup so, ammo so I can slowly reload one bullet at a time. Exactly. What is he a hunter? <laughs> yeah. Or Rambo? Yeah. So Gordon's like, all right, well. Don't shoot Batman if you run into him. Because <laughs> okay. we're trying to arrest him. Yeah, your job is to arrest Batman, exactly. not to kill him. And he's like, okay, yeah, well, whatever. Tell sure. you what, you're only allowed to shoot Batman if he shoots you first. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, when everyone leaves Gordon's office, Batman's like, they're not going to catch him there. Or me. He's not there. I've mm. been there. Ah, it, already he's, been there. He's already gone. Like, he is someplace else. And yeah, he I'll, knows you're after him. Right. He's not going to be at his house. What? Yeah. <laughs> Batman, you're going to need to, like, give me a symbol or some kind of signal when you're <laughs> going to be in my office, because I just peed a little bit. <laughs> I'm afraid I will never do that. You will just always have to do that. Ironically, there is a Batman story in which Batman pees a little bit. So, uh, Batman and Gordon have, like, an awkward conversation where Batman's more or less like, hey, like, are we, like, friends? Because, like, I really need to trust somebody. Like, I need right. help here. And Gordon's like, look, I am down to clown, but... <laughs> Bro. <laughs> I can't, like, lose my job. Yeah. You know? Yeah, you are a vigilante. Yeah, like, it, and, I'm, and I'm a cop. Like, and I'm a good cop. So when I'm given orders, I follow them. I can, like, half-ass it by trying to hire Nimrods to head up my task force. Mm -hmm. But when they end up being better than I expected, like, I have to then give him accommodations. Right. Like, so, I'm sorry. And also, if we need to talk, I need you to not, he does actually bring up like, don't make me pee. 
Like, so like, if I need to talk <laughs> yeah, to you stop. more, like, I, I don't know what to do. And so they're talking, and Gordon looks at Batman and sees that in the, like, noirish lighting in <laughs> Gordon's office, Batman casts his big shadow on the wall. Uh. He's like... Oh. So what? Gordon gets the idea. Well, only two it. issues in, we've had the Batmobile and the signal. Yeah. Well, we're, we're, we're teasing them. Oh, they right. They haven't appeared yet. <laughs> yeah. All right. So the police storm uh, Fish's place. They find nothing. Batman finds another guy and just interrogates him, finds out where Fish is hiding. It's in an apartment above some place uh -huh. in Gotham. And doesn't then Batman matter. throws him in the garbage. Then we, it doesn't matter because we cut right to Fish's hideout. And Fish is in a hot tub with some girl, and like, which is like, this is, uh, there is no actual nudity in this book, <laughs> and it is gratuitous. Yeah. The amount of attempted nudity in this Batman comic. Right. And I'm just like, I get it. Like, they're trying to capitalize on like the adult nature of the title right. and of Batman Year One and how it brought in these new older readers. Well, and like, no, the people that would be reading this would be mature. They're interested in like how Batman began. Oh yeah, definitely. Right. And they're not just kids who are looking for softcore porn <laughs> secretly hidden between the pages of the Batman comic book. No, no. Never that. I just got a remark also on this 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 hot tub. Oh, I know. It doesn't even make sense. With, it oh, looks he's, like he's, he's clipping through the side of it. <laughs> like, what is happening? No, the rolls of his fat. That's how fat he is. Pouring over it. Yeah, yeah but it's also like his shoulder, shoulder blades. blades. No, he's nope. like leaning going, back. You nope, know? nope, it's, it's all no, just it's, gelatinous. It's, yeah, no, he's clipping through the meat. <laughs> that's, that's insane. I, I, know. I feel like I'm going crazy looking it's at just, it. I'm just like, we'll turn the page. Yeah. Well, here's the thing. I drew the hot tub first. Yeah. And then I tried to put them in and I realized how big he is and I'm like, Oh, he's well, not going to fit. If I actually put him in, he's going to be on top of her. The Comics Code is definitely not going to let that Maybe happen. he was further in and they were like, no, it's... No, it, move him farther it, it away. It look like he's having sex with her. Pull uh. it back. <laughs> <laughs> Except there's no computer, so it's like... Uh. <laughs> anyway. And I drew everything else. Damn it. So Fish hears Batman like scurrying around his house, so he runs out there like butt naked with a shotgun and tries to like kill Batman and Batman beats the living shit out of him and then uh, you know nice. scares the lady you know she's screaming and he pulls a fugitive shut up he actually peeks through the door and he goes he needs his pants <laughs> so he's coming with me clearly ghoul he's like well I've already drawn one naked woman how about another one so Catwoman breaks into the reporter there's nothing this has nothing to do with anything like, this is just Catwoman's story. No, remember right. that fact that she saw a news headline. Yeah. yeah. And saw, like, well, Batman was watching the news report on TV, but it stands to reason that uh, Catwoman was watching the same one because Catwoman goes to the news reporter and scratches her back and goes like, I'm Catwoman. I don't work with Batman. <laughs> yeah, make sure you put that in the article next time. And she's like, ah! And it's like, yeah! I didn't hear anything you said. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm sear <laughs> I'm like writhing in pain yeah. right. from the lacerations you just gave me. Right? Uh, of course she sleeps in the nude. Naturally. <laughs> Batman was like fast tracking catching fish because he wants to deliver him to court as a like peace offering. Because he's like, I need to get the police off my back. Mm. So maybe if I do their job for them faster, that will definitely not <laughs> oh, yeah, make they'd this love guy that. completely insecure and lose his shit. <laughs> so outside of police headquarters, which has a freaking gargoyle, or should I say <laughs> grotesque, because technically gargoyles have water features and grotesques do not. Regardless, <laughs> this- Well, what if the water features turn off that day? They're conserving. Does it count as a water feature if it's incorporated into the gutter system in some way? I think yes. Like if the gutter like pours yeah, out its mouth that, or something. Yes, I think if, if, if the water feature is implicit in the design, mm. right? If, if, if Doesn't the, have to always be on. No, it's true, yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah, so like a passive water feature. Exactly. Like so in, like uh, if it had one of those bowls for the birds mm. that was holding, would that count as a gargoyle? Only, I think, yes, if it, had, if it had bowls, I think that's okay because okay. it's not like a feature. That's more like an enhance, it's, an, it's an addition, it's an addendum. Uh -huh. You know, like a gargoyle with the mouth open, you know, so that water could pour, pour through, through it. it. That says, you're, you're, you're waiting, you're watching that thing, hoping that there's a <laughs> the water, water feature. comes out, yeah. yeah. Or if you're watching the crow, you're hoping someone will fall on it so blood pours out the mouth. <laughs> Which is like the most vivid imagery I could have of a gargoyle in my entire life. And this is coming from a fan of the TV show Gargoyles. <laughs> All I'm saying is the reason there's a gargoyle there is because Bruce Wayne said every building in Gotham has to have a gargoyle. Yeah, he, he just installed it. them. Yeah, <laughs> just just quietly. I just need things to hang from. Yeah, well, so uh, ba Batman ties fish from the grotesque above police headquarters. Well, Court's like he's stewing in it. He and his crew they're it's arriving, like, oh. 
And then Batman's like, hey, we're cool, right? Here he is. And they're like, open fire! And Blast him! Fire into the sky at Batman. And like, I was like, did they kill fish? But we don't oh. see like fish explode in a hail of bullets. Right. You and we see also him. don't see like how Fall. far he was from the ground. Right, because he falls and he hits his head on yeah, and the he... stone steps and his eyes are open. And I'm like, does he die? But it never comes up again. So I don't know. <laughs> Do I say we yes. see fish again? No, we don't. Okay. Wow. But no one's like, Court, you killed fish <laughs> <laughs> in your mad attempt to, to, to apprehend Batman. Uh, technically, they don't know if he was already dead to begin with. Yes, they. Yeah, I guess that's true. Because he was technically unconscious. So I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> Look, we know that because Batman doesn't kill people. That's right. on his mo. Uh, no. Gordon says that. Yeah. yeah if, but yeah. what's Just funny he hasn't is, killed anyone so yeah, no, far. Doesn't no, mean no, he's no, no, but, but Hugo Strange has signed off on it. We have yeah, an extra true. witness yeah. that has corroborated that Gordon's he has claims. never killed. Yes, that is that his modus operandi yeah, is well, not killing. Yeah, well, that's a first him. time for everything. If they hadn't right. said that, it would absolutely look like that man killed him. Yeah, absolutely. Because like you never see him conscious, and then you see him on the ground, eyes rolled up in his head. You're like, oh, that yeah. guy's dead. And, and right. Batman already had him. blood on his right, head. Except yeah. that, there's no way this dude didn't catch at least three stray bullets from the right? hailstorm they fire up at this goddamn Even if it was just yeah. a ricochet. But then Batman gets away and Court just smashes his own gun on the steps. Gordon sets up the bat signal. He makes a kind of like cutout of what will be the bat signal. Turns it on for what Gordon admits is 30 seconds. Uh -huh. Meanwhile, Court's people are watching Gordon because Court doesn't trust Gordon because he thinks that Batman and Gordon are in cahoots. Which hey is look, he's are. a good cop. Yeah, I know, I'm like, damn it! Uh so they, 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 they see the signal, but they don't see that it's a bat signal. They just see that there's like a beacon that was shined uh. up. Batman immediately responds to it, shows up, and he's like, hey. And Gordon's like, I don't understand why you thought that would work. <laughs> that was so stupid. And all it did was enrage him further. Like, it only made right. him more of a problem. No, you made him look impotent. Yes. That's and usually you can imagine, not gonna... this guy is not going to respond well to that. <laughs> what makes Gordon think he's going to be able to use this bat signal? Like, Well, he uses it right now. How yeah. did Gordon get a giant spotlight onto the top of oh. the building? Oh, no, he gets other cops to do that. Right. And then he no, they're just, like, there's literally cops that I are like... I need a big spotlight. And they're like, why like, are we putting this up here? And they're like, I don't know, maybe it's for an air raid or something. And then Gordon's like, ha-ha! <laughs> Like, oh my god. People are going to wonder why the police headquarters has a bat signal on top of it. Like, I don't understand. They're, they Well, they will only if anyone notices, and I only turn it on for 30 seconds. Right. Otherwise, it's just a spotlight. Maybe I'm trying to look for something. Uh, right. I hate to tell you this, but your building is visible in the daytime. Yeah. And there are skyscrapers <laughs> around it, man. Yeah, anyone can look down and see that there's a bat signal. Oh, no, he can take it off. Oh, so right. He, he can cover it. On, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's true. It's yeah. not going to be a permanent fixture until, like, the police department is okay with Batman. Right. Which, of course, they never will. So uh, we see, of course, the uh, the makeshift gimp Batman mask is on the mannequin. Now Strange, it's on the mannequin. Yep. Strange yep. has poured two drinks, obviously one for the lady, one for himself. And he's like, so, uh, what are you doing later? Oh, wait, that's right. I own you. You could do whatever you want. Just, <laughs> but uh, Court goes to Hugo Strange's apartment or penthouse. Strange's like, oh, shit! <laughs> I'm coming! He shoves his mannequin into the closet. The reason my court is here is because earlier in the story, one of the like provisions of uh, Hugo Strange's consultations with the police department is that he gets unfettered access to like whatever documents he wants, and uh. the documents he wants are all the like uh, re reports of like violent crime in the last five years. And I'm like, oh well, then I'll just back up the trucks. Yeah, what? But I, but I remember it's it's a little more narrow and it's, he's trying to find victims of trauma who may have lost because he's uh, like who might have become Batman. Yes, because he's right. like oh this guy is like in his twenties he has to have like lost a wife or something so I'll find like right you know, a, a widowed man uh -huh. in this pile of paperwork. But Gordon is like if he goes through he's only going back five years he'll never find it that's fine. And I'm like, how do you know that, Gordon? Yeah, oh, that's what? right, because you know it's freaking Bruce Wayne. Right. That's why. That's the only way you would know. Which I appreciate because in year one, I think it's heavily implicit. Like, Gordon yeah, just he knows. He Gordon lies. Because like, he says he has his glasses off when, when Bruce Wayne, Batman, saves his son. You know, I'm practically without, blind without my glasses. Yeah, <laughs> practically. And uh, so I can plausibly deny that I saw your face. So anyway, Court's there, and Court has procured more documents because he's like, I don't trust Gordon, and now I know that Gordon and Batman are meeting together. So he breaks into Gordon's office, finds the missing documents, because Hugo Strange, after a while, after like turning up Bupkis, 
goes back further. Uh. And uh, so Court sees the bat signal, like silt, like a uh, gel that Gordon made. He's like, son of a bitch. Mm. Like Gordon is 100% corrupted. He's in cahoots. He's in cahoots with Batman. Yeah. So he steals the documents, he goes to Stranger's apartment and he's like, here you go. And uh, so while Court and Strange are talking, obviously Court is like, what's up with the glass? Are you talking to people? I heard you talking. He's like, no, 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 no. Oh, no, I just always pour a second glass so I don't have to get up later. That's what he says. It's for yeah. Jehovah. I, I know, I read it. <laughs> and he's like, oh, well, then I'll drink it. So, yeah. Uh, so, oh, so you're an alcoholic. Okay, uh -huh. got it. So Strange is like, you're, you're not so bad at all that. What, 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 what size would you say you are? Like, how big would you say you are? Like, do you work out? Yeah, because remember, like, Strange can't stand on top of roofs. Not that he wants to fuck him, although maybe he does because he wants to bang Batman clearly. Right. But uh, you know he's like he's he's maybe he's like gonna make his own Batman. Oh. With Court. Uh, so Strange goes on a it, date. It's called therapeutic role play. Exactly. <laughs> right. Put this on. <laughs> so Strange It'll actually ends up Batman. going on a date with Catherine. What? Uh, yeah. She was so not interested. Nope. And it's great. Yeah, because her dad pushed her to do it. That's Probably. right. Probably. So he oh. goes on and on about his work and how great he is, and she's like, I really don't care. And he's like, oh, I see. You just don't, you don't give a shit about anything I have to say. You don't re re respect my, pl she's like, I'm doing this okay with my dad. And you know what? I'm done. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> and he's like, well, we'll see about that. Well, I have fulfilled my 20 minute obligation. Uh, I now get my allowance. Goodbye. Yeah, exactly. So he's like, Meh, and he like loses it. Yikes. He calls her little Miss Catherine. Yeah. It's like, okay. And he gets like mad. That's he does. He like breaks scary. a glass. Yeah. How dare she insult him? He yeah. is a big, strong man. Yeah. I like the fact that he has that date, gets upset, and then goes home and be like, "I'm gonna talk to my doll." Yeah. <laughs> put on a Batman mask. You wouldn't insult me, right? <laughs> oh, I'll take that back. <laughs> so Strange calls Court. He's like, "Come over to my place." Court's like, "Okay. Uh, listen, All I'm right. tired, man." And Strange's like, oh, well, if you're really, like, burdened, maybe I should yeah, try some hypnotherapy. Oh. And he's like, I don't really cotton to that whole thing. He's like, no, 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 no. It's just, it's just for you to relax. So he does put him under hypnosis, mm -hmm. and uh, he proceeds oh to uh, go over the, like, information they have, the, you know, that Court brought in. This includes, like, the hang glider analyses and stuff like that. And he's like, what do we know from this hang glider? Like, what do we learn? And it's like, he has to uh, have access, like, considerable access to, like, cutting-edge technology. He has to sleep sometime, and if he operates all at night, what does that mean? He doesn't work. And so Court's yeah. like, oh, he has to be rich. And he's like, that's right, that's right. right. I like cutting-edge technology. You know, a hang glider. Something they had in, like, the 1800s. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's, like, super lightweight yeah, metals Yeah, it's like and alloys like and crap. Exactly, uh, yeah. Moving on. <laughs> So, effectively, Hugo Strange hypnotizes Court and convinces him that he would be even better than Batman and that he should. Mm. And he should get a suit and everything and he should definitely go out there. In fact, I have one right here. And he does. Oh. So, he's like, now This go. is a very effective panel. Oh, yeah. With the multiple... The Stranges mm -hmm. with to those like glasses. show the hypnot yeah exactly it's cool uh, but he he proceeds to talk about it like Batman owns the night but you you yourself you could protect it or you could cleanse it right and so, you could uh, take it back from him exactly so then uh, Court leaves and he's like I'm not even tired I think I'm gonna go do stuff meanwhile Batman mm -hmm. like he does some Batman stuff like some dudes are breaking into a place Batman beats the shit out of them. Um, and, uh, and, and he gets the attention of a cop and shows, like, I've beaten these guys. They were clearly bad guys. I'm, I'm doing good stuff. Meanwhile, the cop is like, a vigilante! Boo! I hate that guy! Yeah. <laughs> in, in the defense of this police officer... Oh, well, Batman whipped a freaking batarang well, in his head. He whipped a batarang, but also it's like, well, but what am I supposed to do with him? Like, right. I don't, there's no evidence. No. Oh, like, look, two people tied up in an alley. I'm yeah. leaving. I guess I better let you go. <laughs> exactly. I mean, look at them, though. They're, they're clearly criminals. Yeah, look at, what just look at them. Yeah. It's like, oh, look at what they're wearing. Yeah. <laughs> what they were asking to get arrested. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, they went out dressed like that. <laughs> you also, really like, Batman to beat the living hell out of you. Well, I, I, I saw them committing a crime. Oh, okay. So then you're going to come down to court and, uh, you know, Speak be a witness yeah. to, to their crimes. Oh, no. I oh, absolutely not. Okay, so. I'd have to tell you who I was. Right. right. Okay, so you just assaulted these men then. So you're under arrest. Right. Like, uh, smoke bomb. <laughs> like, well, okay, okay, yelling smoke bomb doesn't make a smoke <laughs> bomb. Make a smoke bomb? Uh, so, uh, uh, get Alfred on that. <laughs> so Court uh, takes some documents that some cops are like, what is that? Uh, it, it, information on a dive bar called the Skeleton's Closet. Uh, Great name. It's a place where gun runners go to make sales. Uh. And so then... I thought... That Yikes. the Batman scene yeah. was going to be court. Right, being Batman. 
and he was going to kill the bad guy. Oh. Right, that would make a lot of sense, and something like that happens later, but no, instead, Court arrives at the Gunrunner Bar, dressed like a goddamned ninja. He is called the Night Scourge, which is no notes. <laughs> No, no. Court is a effing nin. He looks like Snake Eyes Phase One. He looks like an effing foot soldier from the Foot Clan. That's awesome. What is she doing on the bar? Oh, I just, assume just being pawed at. Body right? shots. I assume it's body shots. Could be body we shots. We see there are a couple shots. I love. Court walks in as the Night Scourge, which is just a, such a memorable name, and he'll be a classic villain for Batman from this day forward. Uh, but he insults everybody. He's like, yeah, I'd say I could take on any man here if there were any men here anyway. Oh. And the dude who may be doing the body shots, <laughs> he was smoking a cigarette. He is so incensed by what this guy says. He, the cigarette falls out of his face. <laughs> like he takes his face out of this woman's navel. And he's like, I'm sorry. The fuck? <laughs> Which means the cigarette's about to fall on her and burn her. Oh yeah, oh, but yeah. Like, she could take it. She's she's a badass. Look at where she is in this. Oh box. yeah, she yeah. could take it on bare skin, which is oh, yeah. most of her. A, she's got gauntlets with spikes on them. Yeah. She is no stranger she's to not, danger. Yeah, oh, she's, she's tough. Not, she's a tough. She's, she's not tough. Not you could say she's that. a street tough. You might say that. Oh. Court beats the crap out of some guys and wants to get information about like- Also, don't sit on that bar with Barry Lanny clothes on. I that know, bar that is bar's yeah. filthy. Uh, it's not that the bar's that been bar places, has but, diseases. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, Night Scourge beats the crap out of some guys and shakes them down for information. He's, he wants to know, like, okay, so when people buy guns from here, where do they go to make the pickups for said guns? Okay. Uh, and then beats the crap out of them. Presumably, these guys give up their supplier or the gun supplier because he says, where do they go? But they take him to another guy. And so when Night Scourge arrives at this guy's place, of course, he is also naked in bed with another beautiful woman who mm -hmm. is also completely naked. Uh, <laughs> you live in Gotham? You better spend every night like it's going to be your last. That's true. <laughs> People, you know, they're not hedonists. They're just making the best of it. I've got guns, but I, I know that knives, they're quieter. So he whips a couple of knives at the guy, like oh. making a little outline of him. And the guy is like, well, I don't, and then pulls out a gun and fires at him. But uh, oh my god, that should have been the end. But of I know, course. and then he dies, and it's like, of course he does. <laughs> yeah, because no, Night insane. Scourge like defies no, like gravity and like shit. launches yeah. himself over to him, and he uh, beats the crap out of him, and says that he's better than Batman. Uh, apparently, Court could be Batman easily, uh, based on what Court's doing. Although Court does, uh, his, his confidence wavers. Uh, Court, huh. Court beats up this dude, ties him up puts his own gun in his mouth and then like tapes it in there and puts a note on his chest. The note is just poetry. It says, the Night Scourge wants to help too. <laughs> Which just has the energy of a child on a playground who is very unpopular. <laughs> What are, we, what are we doing? Are we playing kickball? So Jeremy wants to play too. <laughs> Not only oh, no. is his gun in his mouth, yeah. the hammer is drawn back. <laughs> yeah. All someone has to do is pull the trigger in this guy. Yeah. Or he has to like fall down. Like, right. Or, you know, make one false move. Yeah. He might already be dead because the woman he was with was like, stop it. You're, you're killing, killing him. <laughs> no, but I will be killing him. Yeah. Oh, nope. he put a pillow over his face. He does. And yeah. like smothered him. I think I he is dead. I, I but then, uh, why the gun in his mouth? It's, it's, I guess the theatrics of it's it. It's a lot. It's a lot of There's a lot of. Uh, it's a, I'm just a little confused. I know. Night, by well, what you're like, trying okay, to do so here. So, like, you're a cop, but you're just like a ninja, and you're trying to beat Batman, but you're gonna. You you use guns, but you're also pre you prefer knives. Like, just a lot of ideas all at once. Right. It's an idea shotgun. <laughs> so uh, Batman, of course, is still building the Batmobile. Hugo Strange derides the Night Scourge. You know, he's like, "Oh, this is a copycat." Oh, Batman right. is Batman's causing, causing this. Yep. Yeah, Batman. Shame. There should be a TV on that he's listening to, but that radio should be playing music. Uh, I agree. That is a straight up ghetto blaster, <laughs> aka boombox. Uh, but yeah, Batman is listening to uh, Hugo Strange make fun of him or talk about what a small dick Batman has and how much he sucks. <laughs> Batman is like, ah, it's not because Batman. Oh, my dick's huge! It's, it's like Batman. It's it, this whole story is literally just it's Batman versus mental health. Uh -huh. Like a psychiatrist is the villain of the story, right? And he is right about like all this shit about Batman. Holy crap! 
you just discovered a effing fold-out poster for Predator 2 in this Batman comic that shows all the weapons. That is better than this comic book. The remainder of the episode will be about Predator 2. So Predator 2 stars Danny Glover and Bill Paxton, and Bill Paxton has the distinction of being killed by a Predator, an alien, and a Terminator. So, you know. Good for him. King. And Gary Busey is in that movie. That's right. In one of the in a performance of a lifetime. Absolutely. Guess Gary who's Busey, back. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, That's awesome. What so a good. fucking ridiculous. So cool. That's so cool. Look at this shit. Greetings. There's your souvenir poster. Thank you. Tear it out on the perforation. I love it. You're like, that's going up in the studio. That's that's getting framed. <laughs> Bruce has had enough of Hugo Strange's psycho babble. He picks up the boombox like he's gonna smash it, and he's like, no. And he turns it no, off. No, I'm not crazy. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's a crazy person thing to do. <laughs> Gordon is putting his son to sleep. And he closes the windows before the sirens wake him up. Mm. And uh, Batman throws a rock at his window from across the, the alley. And he's like, <laughs> He's hey. holding the boombox. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just playing Hugo Strain. Yeah. He's like, yeah. Are you listening to this shit too? <laughs> Can you hear this? Can you believe this shit? <laughs> what are you doing about it? <laughs> but Gordon, it, Batman goes, So your kid, is he healthy and well? And Gordon lies and says, of course he is. Because, as we all know, Gordon's kid will grow up to become a psychopathic murderer in Scott Snyder's run. <laughs> he doesn't know that yet. Yeah. He doesn't, no one knows that. He's just a baby right now. <laughs> just but, a, yeah, but it all, it all happened because of year one, because the, he almost fell to his death. That's Well, he had, drum, he had, he had brain trauma true, when he, he fell. That's yeah. the idea. Yeah. It's like, oh, Batman didn't save anything. No, Batman actually made it worse. Should have let the baby die. That's not true, though, because Batman could not have stopped the Batman who laughs without James well, Gordon. So it all, it all, it all worked comes out. Full circle. Yeah. All, those, all those lives lost were worth it. So uh, Great. anyway, Batman's like, hey, we're friends. And Gordon's like, we might not be for long if you don't fix this problem. Oh, this might be the last time we ever talk. And I'm like, we saw this scene already. You already said that. Yeah. So then Catwoman's like, I'm going to go out. this is my house. No way, don't, don't come, come here. Don't come to my come house. Come to my house. Where my children sleep, where I occasionally have sex with other women that aren't my wife. How dare you? It's not true. We, only one woman. Right. So then so we get a nude scene with we get a straight up silhouetted nipple shot. Okay, this book, and I'm like, and she's got six of them. <laughs> what? Cat. She's got them. I, I, I just, I'm like, before when it was just like mob chicks naked in this book, I was yeah. like, all right, like I, I get okay. it. You know what? Like. You're thinking mob movies? Yes, that's a that's a that's a cliche. Right. But then we have a nipple. Yeah. I, I can't like, believe no, right. so this they would allow this. Well, well, I guess we should have the shadow of a dick too. I think that would be. I think that would devastating. be devastating. That might destroy the company. The line. <laughs> that could destroy the entire. <laughs> that could fucking destroy line. the entire brand for Batman. Lord knows, no one could handle it. <laughs> I mean, Catwoman can handle it. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> Repeatedly. Anyway, so uh, Catwoman is gonna break into a like rich fat cat fuddy duddy party Ooh. when the Night Scourge preempted her like break in. When he knew she was gonna be there, presumably, and so he attacks her now with like katanas. I'm like, oh, now you're a ninja. Now you're straight. Wait, up how did you ninja. learn how to use those? What is happening? Like, <laughs> Because I'm dressed like a ninja, yeah. I automatically. How hard is learning how to use a sword anyway? Well, I'm like ripped as the, shit. I could probably use a sword. You can put the the sharp part in the body of the person you don't want to live anymore. <laughs> there, done. <laughs> Got it. So then Catwoman gets her ass handed to her by the Night Scourge. To be fair, it's like the saddest thing in the world for her. He yeah. knew how to throw knives. That's not. That's not easy. That's not hypnosis. No. no, you don't learn that through. He hypnosis. must have already learned off page yes. how to do that shit. That's just uh, he, he's, wow. a, he's a big mumbly peg fan. No, it's uh, it's a power move. It's just one of those things where he's just like, I'm gonna become a cop. I better like learn how to throw knives well, and shit. <clears throat> I'm gonna become a cop so that I can do all this dangerous shit legally. Exactly. Oh, I want yeah. an excuse. Yeah, I already know how to do that shit. So uh, Catwoman is waylaid by Night Scourge, and then Batman swings in and just kicks Night Scourge through the skylight into the party of the Fat Cats. Nice. Where they fight. Uh, Night Scourge gives Batman kind of a run for his money, but eventually Batman kicks him in the face. And Night Scourge is like, okay, I am not as good as Batman. That was Ow. scary as shit. <laughs> that fucking hurt. <laughs> that hurt oh, so much. Shit. I, I don't think I could actually form two sentences together. Uh. <laughs> I am getting out of here. So he tries to leave. Batman is like, all right, where is he? And then Catwoman hits Batman in the back of the head with a pipe. And then he, what? And then he collapses from. He just saved your life. Yeah, she's like, I don't need you. 
You were unconscious, you and Night Scourge was a- hacked apart yep. by a sword. Yeah. So, well, before Batman falls unconscious and Catwoman leaves, one of the partygoers comes up and she's like, Hey, Batman, you want to come down for a drink? And Batman's like, Ugh. And she goes, No! He's a demon! Like, just, Batman is so scary to look at. This woman <laughs> automatically assumes that a barely conscious man in a bat suit, sweating profusely from the only hole you could see his skin in, <laughs> is actually a demon and she just screams bloody murder and then that's where the, his story stops. And you're like, what? Meanwhile, what? Uh, that is so fucked up. Court goes back to Hugo Strange like, I suck, I'm the worst. And Strange's like, okay, you've earned this, dress like Batman and do this thing for me. So huh. meanwhile- You've earned this. <laughs> you've earned this because you suck ass. Uh, so Catherine is naturally in a state of undress uh, because all women in this book will be. And, uh, Presumably Batman shows up, but it's actually court dressed like Batman in his knockoff Hugo Strange costume. That you can tell because he there's no in. mouth. Yep, and there's stains all over it. And is that too graphic for the show? No. <laughs> no, it's not. We've said much worse. <laughs> Have we? Court knocks Catherine unconscious so the mayor can see her, and then he hits the mayor. And then as Batman takes Catherine with him, and he's like, call off the task force, knock it off, I am the knight, and he leaves. Mm. Meanwhile, Batman just falls unconscious on the rooftop. Right. Uh, so Court goes to Gordon. Gordon's like, all right, I need to get a lid on this thing. And also, I'm like, the, the mayor meets with Gordon and he's like, so, my daughter's missing, Batman took her, and you are the head of the Arrest Batman Task Force. You have five days to catch Batman. And I'm like, Your five days, days, daughter. <laughs> is missing a- He should have five hours. <laughs> what is wrong with you? This is already like a police state. What are you doing? Well, I don't want to be unreasonable. You don't understand, I'm the mayor. I can't make a big scene out of this, otherwise the press is gonna be all over me. Good! Yeah, it's like, I need you to do this, but like, like kind of slow and quiet. Y your daughter- She'll probably be fine. Also, I'm not a huge fan of my daughter. She's a Batman sympathizer. Right, exactly. <laughs> Well, I need to have I need to, to, I need her to be brutalized by Batman at least for like a couple days so that she really like that gets right out of her system, right. you know, so she knows not to trust right. Batman. She'll she'll learn a good lesson from this. Oh my God! So Gordon's like, I am I'm gonna get fired. I'm getting fired. The mayor's daughter was kidnapped. Well, no. It's over by Batman. <laughs> it's over, man. Well, he, he goes to court and he's like, uh, the mayor just gave me directive like you have to stop Batman by any means necessary. Hmm. Basically, like, Gordon thinks, like, okay, I need to put, keep up appearances that I'm not, like, soft on Batman uh -huh. so I don't get fired. But also, maybe if I take Court off the leash, he will be such a psycho about it that he'll, like, ruin his own career. Because mm. Batman is kind of a badass. Right. So, Gor so Court meets up with his guys and he's like, okay, we have orders to shoot Batman on sight, even though I've literally been operating like that for the last three issues. Uh, so Batman has a dream about his parents being murdered, yeah, whatever. But it's also a spectacular sequence. Mm-hmm. Oh, this, this page. Thank God his dad died. Look at those teeth. I know. What about what about Joe Chill's horrible. teeth? horrible. We also firmly established, like, the murderer of the Waynes is not Joe Chill. It's a guy. It's some guy. Some guy. It's supposed to be anonymous. Mm. Uh, so then... Anonymous killed his dad? Well, wow! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> it has to be some guy because he can't ever defeat it. That's right. right. Like it has crime to be crime. has to be the guy. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If you make it a guy, it's like, well then Batman could stop him and then stop. Yeah, then Batman could forgive him in the most disappointing sequel <laughs> no. known to comic books. Batman can like sure arrest the guy but it doesn't bring his parents back. Right, that's true. Well then Yeah, but it could give him some sort of closure. Yeah, which we which can't we have. Which we can't have. Batman can't get closure. No. Because if we do, then they make that not in continuity anymore. <laughs> oh God. So he's oh, strange, yeah. obviously, oh, has yeah. Catherine tied up in his bed, and he's like, oh, how do you like Batman now, huh? Because now I'm Batman. Oh. Hmm? Something is great. And she's like, you are a psycho. <laughs> and so he backhands her, because he has good practice smacking around the mannequin. He's like, oh, that shut you up, didn't it? Uh -huh. Ugh. Women, women, well, I, ah, I got a problem with women. And I'm like, you don't say. Your head stayed on this time. <laughs> <laughs> Just be glad your head stayed on. Exactly. Yeah, uh, not subtle. No. <laughs> that being said, you know, it's uh, it's mainstream big two comics in the early 90s. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, look. Further gonna, uh, proof that psychiatrists are quacks. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah, because, yep. like, you know, he may have made a good point or two, but, like, look at him now. Right. You know? Just because he can be articulate on TV doesn't mean he's not depraved yeah. psychopath in on fact, the scene. So is Ted Bundy. <laughs> if they are good and articulate on TV, you might actually be more inclined to trust them, and that's, right. that's actually more proof that's positive that they they're untrustworthy. Yeah. 
Okay. So Batman wakes up on the roof, and the cops found him because like they're just oh. checking rooftops. And uh, Batman's like, "Oh shit!" Well, All right, they so know he was, he was there because the yeah, party. He was unconscious. Yeah. The people at the party probably called the police. Oh, that's true. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's, that, great point. So Batman just tries to run away from the cops, and he's like, "This isn't your one. I gotta get out of here." <laughs> uh, so Batman like essentially gives them the slip by slipping into the sewers, and for the first time ever, and the last time ever in a Batman comic book, he goes to the sewers, and he's like, and smears poop on himself. Well, he, he, yes, he's like, what? "This place is cramped." and it smells like shit, and I shouldn't be in here. And then he immediately goes to Hugo Strange's apartment, where Hugo Strange is like, who farted? <laughs> like, it smells like a sewer in here. And that's because Batman was in one. Was he, that's where he was, And yeah. you're like, what? Yeah, we gotta make sure yeah, you know. Yeah, but he didn't smear on himself on purpose. He just, like, no, it was it. accidental, yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. But I'm like, what? Like, the, the Ninja Turtles are still popular. Like, we, we are we are all on board for having cool lairs in the sewers. Right. Don't demystify the sewer. <laughs> no, no. Uh, I don't really the don't want real. people to yeah. go down into the sewers. It could be. A they might die. Children this is a PSA. are drawn to the sewers <laughs> yeah, we because gotta... of actions by the Ninja Turtles. Irresponsible actions by these, these cartoon turtles. Have Batman make it the most unappealing experience you can think of. Right. So... Uh, Strange is like, oh, I'm getting to you. You're in my apartment. Like, you want... You oh. Want. He's not like, you want this, don't you? Uh, <laughs> meanwhile, Catherine is in Strange's I, apartment. I feel like right. Strange should be having a little bit of a crisis right now. Right, like, being oh. like, wait, is this real? Right, Are you I actually Batman? here? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but uh, Catherine's in Strange's apartment, but Batman doesn't know that because he's not the world's greatest detective yet. Huh. Uh, and I don't think you need to be in order to figure out that. <laughs> <laughs> this is what's going well, on. Well, as soon as you come in and Strange has this, like, nude mannequin. Uh, like, it's like, oh. Also, you could, Catherine's like, mm, mm. Right, like, Batman doesn't hear room. it. Yeah, he doesn't I hear guess, it. Yeah. You know, Batman's like, look, I need you to knock it off. Like, I know that, like, you're responsible for, like, my framing. And I need you to tell me who the Night Scourge is making me look bad. And uh, so... Strange takes out a baseball bat because he is Batman. And <laughs> now uh, I'm the Batman. And, and Batman right. is like, it's <laughs> over. Like, I know that you're the I know that you're the main villain of the story. I know that you created Night Scourge. I need you to tell me who he is, hmm. and I need you to tell me where Catherine is. And and, and, and just because Batman's like, at some point he's like being shot at by cops for like the third time in this book. And he's like, I cannot be Batman if the police are shooting at me all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, I need to be working with the police department. So, right. I need to know who the hell you sent out there to kidnap yeah, to the fix mayor's this. daughter. Yeah. yeah. Like, I need to nip this in the bud and cut this off. Like, I, I need to be done fighting the cops. I need the cops to be on my side, at least primarily. Mm -hmm. It's not enough to have one good captain on my side. Right, right. And I still have morals, so I'm not going to start breaking your bones. Right. So, Yet. well, Batman's, uh, you know, Strange's like, what is that smell, though? And Batman says, well, in order to get to you, I had to wade through the sewers. And uh, Strange, I guess, assumes that the mannequin thinks that's hilarious because he doesn't stop laughing. But then he swings the bat at the mannequin, knocking her head at Batman. And then Batman picks up the head. I don't know why. But then the head explodes and a noxious hallucinogen blasts into Batman's face. Strange's like, yeah, I rigged the mannequin to do that what? and I have How access to this. How did you know this, Batman like, was going to pick it up? Or, or like what? Or that he was going to be there you have sex and you... this thing. Why is it like triggered to explode hallucinogens? <laughs> well, in case I ever hit it with a bat. Right. You know, that's my like, but emergency. But he hits it all the time. He hit it earlier in the book. Yeah, but no, I didn't hit it hard enough. the hallucinogen makes her more real to yeah, me. That's true, yeah. Oh, maybe. But, uh, you know, so he's like, all right. So Batman is like tripping out while Hugo Strange is hitting him with bats. And uh, Oh my so God. The, Okay, so that's why Batman is getting actually hit. Yeah. It's because there's a host of Yeah, exactly. yeah he so was Batman like is just at, stunned. So when, when Strange hits Batman and knocks him off of the outside balcony down to the street below, Batman screams out, Mother, Father! Oh. <laughs> he goes, Mother and Father? Oh. And you're uh, like, Batman would never yell that's that. That's ridiculous. Absolutely. But we ridiculous. need Strange to get the clue. Yes. Somehow. Okay. So, uh... Batman yells, not that way, the other way! And then, uh, but that's also like, he's he's eight years old, he's witnessing the death of his parents, like he's he's enacting in his mind what happened on that fateful night, It's but it's also visually happening because he's falling the wrong way because he's right. gonna die if he goes that way. Uh, but he throws a rope and he saves himself and then uh, uh, 
Strange calls Court and he's like, oh man, what a great day I had. You're gonna have to come down here. I'm gonna tell you all about it. You all, Catherine is still changed still the man. tied up. We gotta make sure we get a shot of her in her underwear tied up to Well, the every third page we need to see some boobs. <laughs> Batman, um, you know, he sees his parents like going down mm -hmm. the wrong alley. In this story, we retcon that Bruce tried to convince his parents not to go down Crime Alley, but they did anyway, oh. and so Batman feels responsible for it. So they die, like, you know, this anonymous P. Hancock shoots them, and more blood than ever comes out of them. We don't see that. We can <laughs> see, like, nipple silhouettes, but we can't see blood. <laughs> uh, Batman's like, more blood than ever comes out, and I'm stuck in it, and, and then, like, right. more guns and cops. And he, there's a beautiful sequence of Batman being, like, enveloped by guns, like, they're just surrounding him and he can't escape. Mm. And what actually is happening is Batman is running into, like, the bay, and then he passes out and ends up like getting washed up on shore later in the morning. Uh, meanwhile, the Night Scourge catches a couple of like burglars who are stealing jewels and he murders them with his katana. And he's like, I'm better than Batman, yay! And then Oof. he sends a letter to the police department says, keeping Gotham clean, the Night Scourge. Like he's just, he's getting better at his penmanship and everything. Right. Meanwhile, Court is like falling asleep at his desk and Gordon's like, what is, what is this? What is going what, what is, on? What is this guy's problem? So then he like looks at like all the shit on Court's desk and he's like, Court took my documents. He knows that I'm working with Batman. He like these are the documents that were in my office. Oh uh, shit. Oh boy. Like that's why he's such a friggin' psycho about it. And I can't take them back, otherwise he'll know I took them back. Right. And there's a phone number like written down here. He calls it. Hugo Strange answers it by saying his full name. Gordon then hangs up and he's like, okay, so Strange is connected with Court. Meanwhile, the fishermen of Gotham are trying to kill Batman. Yeah, because uh. they think that he's like a woman kidnapper. Right. And uh, so yeah, the you fishermen- You kidnap one woman. I know. Well also suddenly... he's like killing people with katanas and oh, stuff. Oh yeah, well no, that's the night. Yeah, but people are thinking that it might be Batman or he's working uh, with Batman. Or he's working, yeah, it's like a, of course, a team. Thank, thank God for the Catwoman subplot because maybe we're assuming that because Catwoman and Batman are assumed to be- <laughs> Because we already assumed that Catwoman was working with Batman. That any vigilante that We're now going to assume that all new vigilantes are, are also connected subsidiaries. to Batman. Yeah. I mean, use my previous false assumption to justify this Another one. Another one. Yeah, got uh, it. So, so wait, Court went from being the Night Scourge yeah. to yeah. being Batman and kidnapping Catherine. But only that one time. Only the one to time. Implicate now, Batman. Now, now I'm now back I'm to back being the Night Scourge. Yeah. Why wouldn't Hugo Strange just keep him being Batman and being bad? Well, because Hugo Strange has to be Batman yeah, now. He, I need you to pretend to be Batman, but I yeah. actually but want I, to be Batman. But I need that suit now, though. Right, because uh, I, I can't get off around without it. it. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That was a one-time owner. Yeah. <laughs> so Batman goes back to his house, and it's like he was—he was like it took all day, and he was like he had to I, fight fishermen on the way. And he's like that was that was the worst indignity of my life because he's like <laughs> they weren't afraid of me. Like they just they just saw me as a dude in a costume. Right. Well, it's daytime. Yes. And yeah. you're sopping wet. Yeah, you're, they yeah, hold you out of the water. Yeah, you're balls on the deck. But, uh, but that's the thing, he's like, that. this is like demystifying me, it's invalidating my brand, you know, because there's too many vigilantes. And yeah, all I can't have people. that. Yeah. yeah, and it's like, and it's working, and, and they're not, they, they, they band it together. Meanwhile, Strange uh, conspiratorially talks to Catherine about like, how she did a great job. And not like he took what? advantage of her, it's just that like, she had to record some lines for him into a tape recorder, oh. and then Batman ends up back at Wayne Manor, and he finds, Alfred unconscious next to a conspicuous vase. Uh -oh. uh, and then he runs into the like dining room where uh, mannequins of Thomas and Martha Wayne are sitting there oh, and they no. have tape recorders attached to them. We don't know that at the time, uh, but they're saying like un unpleasant, hurtful things about like, you let us die. You know, you, you, you've, you've dismissed our memory, blah, blah, we're, blah. We're disappointed in you. Yeah, like, if you didn't take us to the movies, we'd still be alive. You know, so he's, no! Ah! So he's freaking out. And, uh, we always loved your brother more than you. <laughs> that brother will not exist until the New 52. <laughs> he smashes one of the mannequins and finds that it's tape recorder and it's like this fake face. And, uh -huh. uh, Alfred tries Is to- Is it therapeutic where it's just like, I finally killed my parents. I killed my parents. <laughs> I did it, I, I knew it. I knew I was responsible. No, no, he's more like, oh, it's not my mind. I'm not freaking out. Uh, and then Alfred's like, Bruce, like stop. And Batman like backhands him. And then oh boy. Runs. He's like, I gotta go to the cave. It's the only place where I'm not crazy. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh yeah. It's there. Yeah. Batman like trips and falls and just like falls unconscious in the cave. Uh, meanwhile, uh, the this story is insane. And I, I know. love this is, it. Yeah. This is... <laughs> the Night Scourge is like hacking up Gotham and people are talking oh. about how amazing he is. Meanwhile, don't forget that five days. Oh yeah, the five days. The five day ultimatum. Oh right. my God, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, well now it's been like two or three days. You know, yeah. Batman's right. just been in the cave and Alfred's been like, hey. Hey, hey how Night, you doing? Does Night Scourge have a theme song? 
I hope he does. <laughs> like, Night Scourge. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> In his own head, he definitely does. Night Scourge. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Albert's like, hey. Hey. I got food. We're Make leaving sure at the top of the it. steps. Goodbye. Yep. yep. Um, uh, I'm not coming down there. But eventually Batman like realizes, ah, I've got to eat and survive and stop this night's scourge, da 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 da. Right. Like, the, the, the whole like psycho babble that Strange has been throwing at Batman has actually been penetrating him and it's been making him like second guess his mission and make, maybe, maybe I am nuts. Right. Well, you are the, a little bit. The lesson okay. of the story is that he isn't and never will be. Like he's like, mm. no, he, he actually triumphantly says, when someone says he's crazy, not even a little. Mm. And I'm like, no. A little, maybe a, maybe a little. I mean, look at the cave, for example. <laughs> so Batman opens the door, yes, uh-huh. and trips, <laughs> yes, yeah. and, and falls, falls down, down the, the stairs, stairs. Yes. and falls unconscious. Yes. yes, we then see the stairs are like the steps in the mines of Moria. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, There's all yes. these turns. He, and he made spaces. every turn. He every, yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, oh, come up to a turn. i got to shift my weight. <laughs> That's why it took, it took two days to wake up, <laughs> which is a miracle in and of itself. I can't get over that energy in my head now. Yeah, it's terrible. Wait, you went down all those stairs? <laughs> oh, my God. How? How are you alive? <laughs> Meanwhile, Gordon is doing his own police work, and he just goes into court's office, opens a drawer, finds the knives, and he's like, oh, he's the Night Scourge. Okay, I got it. Yeah, well, that's not that hard to figure out. Uh, meanwhile, Batman finally like gets his head out of his ass, and he calls Gordon, and he's like, "All right, I have one last favor to ask you, because both Batman and Gordon are by are, are like the jig is up. Like Gordon's like, I'm gonna get fired, and Batman's like, and I can't be Batman in Gotham. Like I can't do it mm. because if the police are shooting me every day, I can't even think about who I'm hunting. Right. So it's over. So he's like, all right, one last thing for me. The joke's on you because now you can't have either of us. That's right. No. So he's like, he, I'm not. He's like, I'm going not to even going you. to rape you. Like, Don't I need worry. To work this reader. in here. That's not part of this. It's not, it didn't happen before. Even and though it's it not absolutely would be, but okay. Like with everything else about this character. Yeah. No. He's de- he's like, nope. You will. And maybe he would have if she hated Batman. But the fact that she wanted Batman, he's mm. like, oh yeah, you didn't even believe in what I espouse, so I right. don't even respect you enough. Right. To, to, to take advantage of you. Uh, so. You know, Alfred, so, so Alfred comes down, and he's like, oh, thanks for eating, I'm glad you're eating again. And Batman's like, hey, I'm sorry I punched you. And Alfred goes, I know you are. <laughs> I'm like, that is not a, you're welcome. <laughs> but uh, then you hear like, <laughs> and Alfred's like, what? And Batman's got the Batcave. And cool. Alfred's like, oh, you weren't like down here feeling remorseful, you were building the effing Batmobile, you jackass. <laughs> but he doesn't say yeah. that, he's more like, oh, you clearly you were doing more than brooding, Master Bruce. And we see the first Batmobile, which sucks. <laughs> Well, I mean... What even is this supposed to be? It looks like you got Shades of the Millennium it's, Falcon with the notch in the front. Right? And it's almost like a F, uh, Formula One car mm-hmm. with yes. the tires on the outside Absolutely. Like that. Oh, no, that's, yeah. With the little, like, yeah. capsule in there. I was like, yeah. Yeah, that means it's incredibly fast. Yes. Which I guess it that's has it. To be. It's just it's built for speed. But he's like, yep. Uh, so anyway, he springs in action using the Batmobile. He also, we've seen him like, walk home twice, mm-hmm. and he, ma- he makes mention of the fact that he's like, I need that car. I gotta get that car going. <laughs> I, I can't do this. Right, uh, and so, you know what? I need to recover for a minute anyway. Let me take that time to build the car. Exactly. You know. So Batman shows okay, up. Hey, it's got like the hooks that you would lift it from. Oh yeah, to work on it. For the lid. Oh. Like it's not even done. Oh. Yeah. No, 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 that's that's accurate. That's for like oh, performance to work on cars. It. Yeah, that's yeah. true, that's true. So Batman shows up at Hugo Strange's house, and Strange is, of course, half Batman. Right. By the way. I've been sitting in this for like three days, oh, waiting yeah. for you. Maybe this is the inspiration that Batman gets to put the yellow disc behind Oh, great. I'm like, He's, what? <laughs> he gets the idea from Hugo Strange? Cool. All I'm saying is it really popped at night. <laughs> in the dark, no one can see the Bat logo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But with a, with a little bit of splash of color behind it, definitely. Plus, it reminds me of that signal that Gordon made. <laughs> yeah. Even though we get a perfectly good explanation in The Dark Knight Returns, in which he says, like, I put a target on my chest. I can't armor my head. Right. And I'm like, yeah. That's yeah. Cool. So Batman shows up at Hugo Strange's place, and he's like, ah, oh, I've, I've beaten you, and you know, you're here to surrender. And Batman's like, all right, how'd you do it? Mm-hmm. Like, how'd you, how'd you get Catherine? How'd you get the Night Scourge going? Right. Just tell me who the, you who the Night Scourge out is. I'm also not going to ask you how you got to my mansion and put things up, because mm-hmm. I'm smarter than giving myself away. That's right. Mm-hmm. I know that when you saw your dead mother and father, you must have lost your shit. And he goes, my mother and father live in Paraguay. I have no idea what you're talking about, and I ha- it doesn't mean anything to me. Huh. And he's like, all right, fine, whatever. And he's like, well, 
at least you can admit that I beat you. Because I'm going to call the police. And then uh, Gordon shows up. He's like, save your dime. Because we're here to arrest you. And he's like, what? And he's like, yeah, because you said you kidnapped Catherine. <laughs> uh, like, we were listening. Right. The entire time. This was a setup. But this was the, this is the like, sting operation that Batman set up with, with, with Gordon. Right. And he's like, what? <laughs> oh, no. And Batman's like, you heard it all? And he's like, I did. And he's like, well, just in case you didn't, like, hear everything, I took Strange's other tape recorder that said, like, the stuff from the other mannequin, and I recorded everything as well. So you have that tape as well. And then one of the cops, like, opens one of the doors, like, hey, here's Catherine. She's in here in, in lingerie. That's kind of messed up. Hey, have we had an yeah. uh, almost naked woman in a shot yet? No? Okay, here we go. Open the door. But no, like, th- this, this cop is more, like, enterprising than Batman. He's yes. Like, I opened one door. Hey. Oh, I found her. Hey, I found her. Hey, she's in here. Could have saved her four days of soiling herself if, uh, if, if Batman had <laughs> just literally opened any door. Oh, and, it smells like a sewer in here. <laughs> <laughs> so, literally, like, Gordon and Batman are talking about that where he's like, oh, so... Strange is a psycho. Got it. Okay. And then meanwhile, S- Strange breaks free of his captors. Like, no! Nah! <laughs> just runs out the window, runs across the roof. And Batman's like, you'll never make the jump, Strange. Don't do it. He's, you'll never he, make it. He's too crazy. He won't hear me. Right. So Strange like runs away in his Batman costume. And I ha- tries to climb off of one of the buildings where all the cops are. You know, that were like his entourage, that were Gordon's entourage. He still has handcuffs on, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. he does. Yep. Yeah, he's, he's, like, nah. he's running like this. Yeah, he's like, no. Nah. But the cop's like, hey, it's Batman. Don't we have orders to shoot on sight? Oh, shit. And they immediately fill him with bullets. Uh. <laughs> but he falls off of the ledge and then lands in the river. Right. No. And they dredge oh, the river come on. Him. They're They're like, no, body. Just, kill no him. Body. just kill him. You're not going to get another better, better Hugo Strange story. And, and Batman and Gordon, like, see this. And they're talking to each other like, what happened? And Batman's like, they shot him because they thought he was me. You asshole. <laughs> and he's like, hey, it's not over yet. I still have to punch somebody. Huh. Like, where's Night Scourge? And Gordon's like, I don't know, but I think it's court. Because, look, see this knife? I found it in his place. And see I this think- knife? Really close to your face? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Look at this knife. Ah! <laughs> it's court. You're the Night's Court? <laughs> so, uh, so okay, Court's like. Okay, fair. Now I peed a little bit. There we go. So, Court's like, all right, I'm going to go do some more Night Scourging. Right. Gets in his car and uh, he bumps into Batman. Like Batman literally just engages. He was just walking around looking for him. Well, no. Uh, so Court. I'd like, love it if Court was like done with his shift and he starts like no. taking oh, stuff out of his trunk. Batman's Batman just like, hey, him. oh hey, yeah. cool. Now we can go out together. I'm gonna put my night scourge <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, excuse me. Court hates Batman, but he's but it, yeah that Court hates Batman. But the night scourge yeah. doesn't. Dude, that like that is gonna be like fe- like that that's Azrael. Yeah. That's exactly what they do. Yeah. You know. Uh, that, that, that's Proto-Azrael. Baphomet in the <laughs> peeing story. <laughs> but Batman follows Court. Court parks under like an overpass and then puts on his Night Scourge costume. And then Batman tracks him, but then Court gives him the slip and then attacks him. And Batman's like, ah, oh, shit, this guy's actually pretty okay. Oh, shit. So then Batman and Scourge fight, and Scourge's like, I'm better than you, and I got swords. Hey, how would you feel about wearing a red and green yellow suit? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and ditching the swords. Uh, so they fight, and Batman's like, damn it, he's got these swords. These swords, he's got range. It's nonsense. So right. Batman tries to, like... You have batarangs. Throw them at him. Right. Well, he... No, I have to use them as, That's like, like, swords. As swords. What? And I'm like, what? And he will only do this, as far as I'm concerned, in this and Batman Predator 2 blood sport. <laughs> and yes, blood these, match. these do look like boomerangs. Right? Like yeah. they, I'm like, yeah. what? And they only look like that when Ghoulsey draws them. So Batman and uh, Knight... Court fight. No. <laughs> Night court. I, want to call that I mean, yes. <laughs> so uh, he's like, put the put the put the blades away. Stop fighting me with swords. Oh, oh, man, I gotta get my clarinet solo out. He's also got these spikes on his on his shoulders and his arms. It's really it's really effective in yeah. preventing me from getting in there and exactly. grabbing him. So uh, Batman. Gets, oh wait, I have spikes on my arms too. Oh, yeah, I literally have these things that are meant to catch swords and break them. Oh, right. Well, I should probably use those. But I won't. And the Instead, artist knows I have them because they're definitely drawn right there. They're always drawn there. Yeah, but the uh, artist is like, no, those aren't meant to catch swords. Those are there to look that's cool. That's cloth. Yeah. Damn it. So Batman <laughs> fights uh, Night Court and knocks the swords away from him. 
Oh, he uses the these other batarangs for throwing. Yeah. So these are the throwing batarangs. Those are the little throwaway batarangs, not the not the big. Like those the, are those are the, the big, bat stars. Yeah. Yeah. But he only uses these while holding them, though. He never throws this one. It drives me nuts. So he's not. I don't think he's supposed to throw this one. He's like, what, what, no, he this never is, uses them in any other comic book. This is my hand-to-hand -hand combat batarang. What? The ones I throw are these triangle ones that also look like no other batarang I've ever seen. <laughs> True. So uh, Batman gets him away from his swords. They fight for a little while. Batman's doing better, but then he knocks uh, Night Court near the swords. And he's like, not the swords! Oh no, I knocked him near those damn swords! The way Arch Nemesis. Oh. Catwoman removes the swords. Oh. And she goes, now we're even. Give him hell. Oh. He's like, technically I kicked him through a window. Right. But I guess I'll take it. And how are you even, you asshole? You hit yeah, me you... with a pipe. You gave me brain damage. Yeah, <laughs> hang around afterwards. <laughs> We'll be even after I get to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But while uh, they're flirting, uh, Night Court gets into his car and drives away, and that's a great opportunity for Batman to get into his car and chase after him. Oh, we go. We got uh, a car chase. We, it's barely a car chase. It's actually just Batman. What is happening? The book is over. Yeah, what are you doing? Need a big fight scene. <sighs> yeah, but so, this is this is the actual villain because like. Hugo Strange, while intellectually was, smart, exactly. is no match for yeah, Batman. But he was the puppet master. Yeah. You know, this should this should have been first. I know. And then you have the confrontation with Right, Strange. I agree. Yeah. But then you get, like, yeah. Because this like, is all just, I don't care. Like, obviously, he's going to beat I this know. guy. Well, yeah, now you know my, meal, my real problem with the fugitive. Sykes killed his wife. Right. Why does he beat Sykes first, only to then have an old right. man fight at the end? Yeah. But that would have been a great opportunity, though, for Batman to beat Night Court first, <laughs> and then... Hugo goes strange, hits him with a chair, goes, you'll never give up! <laughs> <laughs> and then Gordon can come in, and Batman's like, I didn't kill those people. And Gordon can go, I know it, Batman. I know it. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. Give him a ice, an but ice pack. But at the same time, <laughs> Yeah, but then Hugo Strange dies at the end, and it's a much cleaner oh, ending. Yeah, yeah. That's true. and then the book just ends yeah, because it's it over. Stops. Instead of like it ends and then it like keeps going. No, but we need to justify for like the a long time. Yeah. yeah. So also, the Batmobile doesn't have a cutout in front of it now. What no, the fuck? whatever. Batman hits Night Court's car with his car. Oh. And he goes ah, and then uh, ah. And, and so Batman chases him down. He runs him down with his car and chases him to police headquarters where Night Court runs into the police station. <laughs> and he's like, I, all I gotta do is get my guns. Once I get my guns, then I can be Batman. And the cops are like, hey, isn't that that Night guy? Hey, man. <laughs> it's that Night What skirt? are you doing? What's going? He's like, no, it's me. It's Court. It's cool. And they're like, oh, my God. And then Batman- You're under arrest. <laughs> Batman waltzes in and he's like, yep. Court was Night Scourge. And it's like, you just did that in the beginning of the story. Like, it, yep, you guys did all that work, and now it's me telling you the end of the story. He's just like, yep, he also uh, stole the mayor's daughter and uh, worked for Hugo Strange and everything. And he's like, no, shoot him, he's a vigilante. And then there's an announcement over the broadband about how, like, cops shot Batman, and he died in the river. And then one <laughs> looks at Batman and he goes, so you've been shot? <laughs> and Batman's like, no. And then Gordon shows up and he's like, yeah, no. Hugo Strange impersonated Batman. Like, all the Batman stuff is all Hugo Strange. Right. And Night Scourge was all the murders. And, uh, yeah, we're good. Not, court, stop. You, you just, right, you it's just over, look, man. You have no swords and you don't have a gun. You just look like an asshole. <laughs> and then Court immediately steals a pistol from, an, an, an uh, like, a nearby cop. Mm -hmm. And then all the cops are like, well, that's all the information I need. And they just fill in with lead. Blah, 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 blah. Yep. Could his insanity right. be blamed on Hugo Strange and sure. the hypnosis? Sure, absolutely. Yeah. 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 But he's he, dead. He went So who cares? No, but the point is that like, oh yeah, it's all tragic. strange. It's a death that he doesn't deserve. That's true. No, yeah. yeah Court's, it's not really fair right. to Court, him. Court's mania is a result of Hugo Strange. Although, uh, it's, it's more like... Uh, he never would have become knight. He would have been susceptible whatever. to it. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, he, it was there. Yeah. Like... Well, it, uh, a Batman flaw says, in his character was exploited by Strange yes. and turned him into this. Yeah, when they talk about uh, Strange and his credentials, Batman says, like, he was always crazy. And he was always going to be dangerous. But I gave him something to fixate on. Mm. So, like, it manifested in this. But it would have right. been anything. Right. Uh, he, the mannequins aren't my fault. <laughs> I didn't make him hit the head of a mannequin with yes. a ba baseball bat. So uh, the, the wrap up is that Gordon talks to the mayor, Gordon explains everything, the mayor's like, so Batman actually is instrumental in saving my daughter, uh, which Batman actually says to Gordon at some point earlier when he's like, Hey, tell we, the mayor I was instrumental well, in saving like, his no, daughter. <laughs> we need an incident like the one where like, you feel like you owe me big time because I saved your kid. We need to do that again before like mm -hmm. the mayor. And Gordon's like, or the city. 
Uh, and I'm like, well, Joker's not too far behind. So right. You'll do so that. yeah, we'll get but, there. Uh, but with with the mayor, you know, maybe that's why we like dragged our feet. I didn't know, but I knew she was behind the door. But right. I need to like prove it. Right. I need the cops to be there when yeah, we rescued when I her. saved her. Uh, yeah. So then, uh, you know, mayor's like, thanks a lot, good job. Maybe Batman's not the problem. Keep this up. Maybe you'll be a commissioner someday. And then Batman and Gordon talk about how like uh -huh. maybe we'll make that signal a permanent thing someday as well. And then uh, that's it. And then the book stops. And then the book stops. And you're like, all right. Yep. And, and it's like, it's fun. And it's very much like a classic Batman story. But it has that like, that hallmark that a lot of these earlier stories have where it's fucking nuts. <laughs> yes. And they yes. cram a lot into it's it where lot. I'm like, you could have, like, th this written today might have been four issues or 30. <laughs> you have yeah. no idea. Like, it's, it's, it depends on what the, uh, what the author was fixated on. Like, what, what part do I want to, like, you know, establish? Yeah. You know? Like, the, the whole, like, Gotham turning on Batman because there's a copycat, like, that's a story. That's, a, that's, a, that's an arc. And this yep. is just a, this is a barely in continuity flashback story. And they were like, oh, yeah, that happened too. And I love Legends of the Dark Knight being that. Like, for the longest time, they're just like, oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> hey, let's change uh, part of uh, Batman's history, like how he got the bat signal. Yeah. Oh, and what's, and the car. What's great is like when they do sequels to them. Like there is a sequel technically. It's not called Prey Two, but like there is another Hugo Strange story that like builds off of this. And it's like they have to change stuff because they didn't get the all clear to do the stuff they did in this. So like the car and the signal, like no. So things had to move. Mm. And I'm like, but you just firmly set it up. Like the the point of this. Like, the, the, the justification, editorially speaking, is <laughs> well, we need to explain where the signal came from. Because we're setting up, like, the new continuity for Batman. I mean, really, at the end of the day, that's what we're doing. Right. Like, we are firmly establishing, like, the bedrock for Batman, the new version of Batman. And so we have, like, definitive, citable proof of where everything that you see Batman doing today came from. Right. But also, it's self-contradictory. And <laughs> it will well, vary that much attention. Most. Like, why? Why? Like, why the, do it? Like, the reason you did a hard reset is because they weren't paying that much attention 40 years ago. But, right. like, if you're not going to pay attention today... Then why'd you even bother? Why bother even rebooting everything? Money. Yeah. Uh, well, we we, we do thought need that we could pay attention and do it right, but it turns out it's like kind of hard. It's actually just as hard as it was. 40 so years ago. never mind. Yeah, except that they weren't stupid enough back then to say anything about right. establishing continuity or paying attention or you know any of that stuff. Right. Well, we still have like stories run away with themselves sometimes. Oh sure. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to get in the way of the artist's vision. So Batman, Prey. Uh, there are multiple. The artist's vision is just a lot of naked women. Well, I mean, certainly that. Uh, the book is chock full of that. Almost naked women. Or fully naked women that are Silhouette. just just, just shy of breaking any rules. Right. It's like... Well, there's no comics code on this. No. Which is you can get away with that. Yeah. yeah. That's, right. That's right. But this is before they scrapped it, right? Yes. So this is just... Well, this title doesn't have it. This That's is one right. of the... Comics code free titles. Yes, yes. That's why we can put nipple in there. That's right. Well, lady silhouetted. nipple. Yeah, silhouetted lady nipple. That's right. Yeah. You know, we don't know that's a nipple. She could have a gummy bear stuck to her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. A gummy bear. <laughs> they reprint this book every once in a while. If there's a new one, it's in the comments <clears throat> down below. Pick it up. I think it's worth reading. It's a really fun story, and it's a classic Batman tale that, of course, gets retconned out. But whatever. It's uh, mm -hmm. worth checking out. Thanks a lot for watching, everybody. We'll see you guys next week with another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. <laughs> Keep reading. <laughs> Man, the depiction of women in this is like... It's, it's, it's an issue. It's really bad, and it for me, it was like... Cemented. Cemented when they rescue her. Nobody talks to her. Nope. Or acknowledges her. Nope. They just continue. Oh, and there she is. I we found her. her. She is. She is strung up. We. I think we see like the hands of a cop who's undoing her bondage. But Batman and Gordon are standing in the doorway. Yep. Like, talking just, to just each like, other. Like, at her. Ben, Gordon's like gesturing at her with his pipe. <laughs> well, <laughs> like she's a Rembrandt. Yeah. And then she's just like hunched over the bed like yeah this just ordeal. like oh my yeah, god no, and they're just she ignoring thought she was her get and that's raced what's, and die what, yeah. what's worse is that like she experiences the harsh reality like it's yeah. not like she's all like, of them she's not like cares. hey Batman she doesn't hug him or anything it's no. like no she gets to depict the horrible reality that she was a part of and everyone else is a Batman comic <laughs> now <laughs> and the artist knows because it drew her like that like <laughs> It knows she's suffering, right. and it's and and consciously about, the men are just ignoring her. Yeah, like, well, you know, she's going to need a minute. No, she's fine. No one even gets a, like, half-hearted coat. Man. Nope.
<laughs> Nothing. Or, she's on blankets, just... No. She also doesn't so, get another line in the book. No. That's it. Do you think she's still a Batman fan after this? I don't know! <laughs> <laughs> like, he did rescue her? But, kind of? But, like, in a way, does she know for a fact that he also didn't kidnap her? Right. Like, right. Or is he just, like, a great illusionist? I don't know. I, right. I, I fear, like, maybe, at the very least, she will have Batman-associated trauma. Oh, yes. yes. Like, no matter what, even if she was a defender of Batman, she can never look at him again. Right. As evidenced by the book. Yeah. In which she can't. <laughs> but yes. Woof.